Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page, and welcome back. Everybody hashtag live, you're joining us live, hashtag record if you're joining recorded, hashtag share to get this out of your page, and everybody, if you're here, go ahead and start hitting the hearts, hitting the likes, going crazy on those, letting all of our first-time guests know that we are so glad that they are here. I hope you guys are awake and um, alert after this Christmas uh, vacation time that you've had, and you may still be on uh, vacation for the New Year celebration. Uh, it's almost 2021, guys. Wow. I can remember in 1999 thinking, what will the year 2000 bring? Well, we're 21 years beyond that with, 19, with 2021. How many of you remember the Y2K? If you remember Y2K, Hashtag Y2K. For all of you younger folks, that is the letter Y and the numeral 2 and the letter K. Y2K. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. Merry Christmas belated to all of you who I have not seen in a couple of days. I have missed you guys. How many of you um, had a great Christmas season with your family? I know that some of you have struggled um, incredibly. Uh, with different sicknesses and uh, viruses. And I just want you guys to know that, that the ones we know about, uh, we have been praying for, thinking about, uh, wishing we could do something. So if there's something we can do, please let us know, guys. And uh, pretty much, and here's something that the majority of you do not know. I had COVID. Uh, we kept it very quiet. Um, I took two weeks uh, quarantine. I did not post about it. I did not talk about it. I did pray first through it, and you didn't know it. And um, I had to I had to reschedule a leadership intensive at Cross Point Church. Uh, we were supposed to come together. All of our leaders come together once a year, and uh, we have a leadership intensive where we invest in one another as leaders. And I'm telling you. Um, the exhaustion, and everybody experiences the symptoms differently, but the exhaustion for me uh, and the headaches, the exhaustion and the headaches, and then near the end of the exhaustion and the headaches um, was I lost, the, I lost taste and smell for about five or six days. So I know uh, a little bit what some of you are going through. Some of you are going through a lot of fever and coughing and things of that nature, uh, I'm praying for you. So don't think, well, he doesn't know. <laughs> uh, I do know because I have had and I am thinking about you guys. We're talking about what was God thinking about? What was God talking about? So as we get into that, I want you to go ahead and at symbol your friends. Make sure that you invite them here. Also make sure that you uh, share the page uh, so that everybody can get here. I have missed you guys. Share the page right now. Uh, I have missed you guys so much. Uh, yesterday on Sunday, I, 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 I preached. I hope that you were there. Uh, it was probably one of the most important messages uh, that I have ever preached. And I just, uh, man, you can go back on the Cross One Online page and watch it. Seven prophetic words through seven people concerning the birth of Christ. Prophecy means, prophecy means that God is speaking. So in other words, what was God speaking around the birth of Christ? What was God talking about when Christ was born? And if you remember uh, when we left each other, I believe it was on Wednesday of last week, we had number one. So hashtag number one. Number one is salvation. Number one is is salvation. Jesus came to bring us salvation. Number two, favor. This is the one we're going to talk about today. What was God talking about? What were the seven prophetic words given by seven people surrounding the birth of Christ? What was God talking about when Jesus was born? He was talking about salvation and he was talking about favor. He's talking about favor. Uh, hey, Fred, man, thank you so much. And I knew that was your mother-in-law. I don't know what I was thinking, but thank you for giving me an update, Fred. Appreciate that, guy. I love you, man. 
favor. Number two, God was talking about favor. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 30, this is a prophetic word given to Mary. This is given to Mary. Luke chapter 1, 26 through 30. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Joseph uh, was betrothed to Mary. Mary was, had a, an arranged marriage with Joseph uh, probably when she was a small girl, and he was a much older man. Uh, but before they came together, the angel come and talks about specifically this young lady, this, this virgin named Mary. Verse 28, And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. Word number two. Word number two. Favor. Favor. Everybody, come on. Word number two. Favor. What was God talking about around the birth of Jesus Christ? He was talking about salvation and he was talking about favor. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor. Come on. Do not be afraid, Mary. Do not be fearful, Mary. Do not think that God's come to get you, Mary. Do not think that God's come to pay you back, Mary. Do not think that God has come to do bad to you, Mary. Do not think that God has come to take something from you, Mary. Mary, God hasn't come to take something from you. God doesn't want anything from you. God is complete and lacking nothing. You have nothing God needs, Mary. Do not be afraid. God has not come. God does not want to take anything from you, Mary. God wants something for you because you are highly favored. You have found favor with God. The word favor here in Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 30, is the word charis. Everybody hashtag charis. Charis. Hashtag C-H-A-R-I-S. Charis. It is the Greek word for grace. The word favor here is the Greek word charis, which is normally translated as grace. Listen, the Greek language is the most descriptive, detailed, one of the most descriptive, one of the most detailed, picturesque painting languages of all time. And there's inflections on the words. There is different pronunciations of the word. There is different inflections on the word that cause that word to paint with a different stroke, with a different color with a different hue. You know, there's not just one blue. There's not just one red. There's not just one. There are many, 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 many countless shades of those colors. I simply believe something about colors to get off the subject because, you know, if you watched yesterday's uh, message or you were part of the in-house or online church yesterday, I get distracted. I believe there are colors we haven't seen yet. I believe there are tastes we haven't tasted yet. I believe there are smells that we haven't smelled yet. I believe there are feelings we haven't felt yet. And here's the point. God chooses a very descriptive language to bring us his word in the form of Greek so that he could hide things in it so that we would go and search them in it so that we could know that he's our daddy and that he likes to play hide and seek. So where am I going with this? Rejoice, highly favored one. Do not be afraid, Mary. Listen, do not be afraid, Michelle, Tasha, Fred, Patty. Do not be afraid, Raymond and Brandy. Do not be afraid, Philip and Lana. Do not be afraid, Doug. Do not be afraid, Brandy. Do not be afraid, guys. You have found favor. The word is charis. You have found charis. Only six times in the entire New Testament is the word charis translated as favor. 130 times it is translated grace. What is God saying? You have found favor 
but you have also found grace. Grace has rested upon you, Mary. Mary, you can't do what you're about to do without what I'm about to give. Let me say that one more time. Mary, you can't do what you're about to do unless I give you what I'm about to give you. Listen, Barbie. Uh, listen, Tasha. Listen, everybody. You're not going to be able to do what God wants to do in you unless God gives you what he has for you, and that is grace. Grace is not simply unmerited favor. God's not wanting to take something from you. You don't have what God wants to give you. See, Mary, you don't have everything it takes to do what I'm calling you to do. But the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and he's going to give you something you don't have so that you can do what I'm calling you to do, Mary, Patty, Barbie, Stacy, Glory, Raymond, Chip, Mike, Doug, Brandy. You, you don't have it, but I'm going to give it to you because I'm going to ask you to do something that is impossible, Mary. I'm going to ask a virgin to have a son. I'm going to ask a person to bring God's grace. Grace is not simply unmerited favor. Grace is the power to do what God has called you to do, and he's calling you to do something that you cannot do alone. He's calling you to do something that you don't have the resources to do. He's calling you to do something that you don't have the education to do. He's calling you to do something that you don't have the will to do. He's calling you to do something that you don't have um, the ability to do by yourself. Listen, if what God has called you to do, if your dream, if your destiny uh, is something that you can do by yourself, it didn't come from God. If your destiny, if your dream, if your destiny doesn't cause you to panic just a little bit, it's probably not from God. God's going to do something in you that you cannot do by yourself. He's called you to do something that you don't even have all the ingredients to do. You don't have all the resources to do. You don't have all the power to do. You don't have all the anointing to do. You don't have all the education to do. You don't have all the influence to do. He's calling you to do something, Mary. He's not asking something from you. He wants to give something to you. God doesn't want something from you. He wants something for you. Mary, you have found favor with God. God has found favor with you. God has found grace with you. Mary, you have found grace in the Lord. God spoke salvation and God spoke grace around the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, what does this mean? Here's what it means real quickly. You are one of God's favorites. What does, what does the word favor mean? Mary, you found favor. Mary, you are one of my favorites Mary, you're my favorite. Listen, you're my favorite. I, I need every one of you who can hear me and can bring yourself to type it. You too, Chip. I want y'all to type this out right now. I am God's favorite. You say, but I haven't done anything. God doesn't want something from you. God wants something for you. You don't have to do anything to be his favorite. He wants that for you. He wants to, I have found favor with you. I am giving you favor. I am giving you grace. I am giving you anointing. I am, I am one of God's, I am God's favorite. You say, that's, that's a pretty bold claim, Pastor. There's, he has many children through many ages, and, 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 and they're, you know, how can they all be his favorite? Well, I'm a daddy. I have three sons, Paxton, Cooper, can't even talk about them <laughs> without this, and Jarvis. And when I look at them, and one of them says, you know, I'm daddy's favorite, they're right. If all three of them were to stand side by side and say, I, not we, I am daddy's favorite, they would be right. 
because you can have multiple favorites. Favorite doesn't single you out. Favorite includes you. I hope you heard me. Favorite doesn't single you out. Favorite includes you. The word favor itself means that favor rests on you. That daddy's favor rests on you. That daddy's grace rests on you. That daddy's power to love has been placed on you. You don't do anything to earn it. You don't do anything to deserve it. I have decided that I'm going to love you. I am going to pronounce grace upon you. I'm going to pronounce favor on you. I'm going to help you do what you can't do unless I give you what I have. I'm going to help you to know who you are, Paxton. I'm going to help you to know who you are, Cooper. I'm going to help you to know who you are, Jarvis. You are my son. You are my favorite one. You are loved. You are cared for. I want to empower you. I want to give you identity. I want you to know your significance. I want to help you know who you are. You are mine. Listen, they don't know whose they are unless I tell them whose they are. You're my favorite. I have multiple favorites. Let me help you understand this even better. What is your favorite food? What's your favorite food? If I were to ask, is steak your favorite food? Some of you would say, oh, yeah, that's my favorite food. And then I would say, well, what about um, ice cream? Is that your favorite food? Oh, yeah, ice cream's my favorite food. Do you like Mexican food? Oh, yeah, I like Mexican food. Well, is that your favorite? Yeah, Mexican food is my favorite. Do you like Italian? Oh, yeah, I like Italian. Is Italian your favorite? Yeah, I like Italian. Do you like hamburgers? Yeah, I like hamburgers. That's my favorite. Guys, or your favorite song, or your favorite band, or your favorite, you know, I have many, many, I have a lot of favorite foods. I have a lot of favorite songs. I have a lot of favorite artists. I have a lot of favorite things. It's not because they have anything. It's because I have chosen them. Guys, you are chosen by God. What are the seven prophetic words? Number one is salvation. Number two is favor, favorite, the one on whom God's favor rests. It is significant to note that in the Old Testament, they were continually told to keep and do. Okay, keep the law, do the law. Keep the law, do the law. If you want to please God, you have to keep the law and do the law. Keep the law means carefully observe it. Keep it, carefully watch it, carefully observe it. Do it means obey it. Keep it, watch it, obey it. However, in the New Testament, that narrative changes, and we are simply instructed to keep it. We are simply instructed to keep it. We are simply instructed to watch it. We are simply instructed to carefully watch it, to carefully observe it, to carefully keep it. It doesn't say that we are to carefully do it. The reason they were told to carefully do it, be sure that you're careful to do it all, is because they were trying to obtain righteousness through what they had in them. Good works, effort, struggles. In the New Testament, we're told to keep it because the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do it. The Holy Spirit has already accomplished righteousness inside of us. We have been saved, now we are favored Listen to what John says in John chapter 1, verse 17. The law was given to Moses. You've got to keep it and you've got to do it. But grace and truth, John says, came through Jesus Christ. Not only did he have a requirement of us, he filled the requirement with something we did not have the power to do. And that was the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, 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 here we come. I'm his favorite. You're his favorite. God's favor rests on me. God's favor rests on you. And this is, this is maybe the best news before I pray for you. Therefore, you can not disappoint God. 
You cannot. There, it is an impossibility for you to disappoint God. It is impossible for you to disappoint God. It is without possibility. It is impossible to disappoint God. Why? Because to disappoint someone, there must be an unmet expectation. I hope you're listening. You cannot disappoint God, ever. None of you, me, you, none of us. It is impossible. You never have and you never will. To disappoint someone, there has to be an unmet expectation. Something was expected that was not followed through with. Something was expected that was not carried out. Something was expected that didn't happen. Something was expected that was never done. God has never expected anything out of you. God has known all along every single step, every single thing that you would ever do. He never thought, oh, I thought they'd do this. Oh, I thought they'd do that. Oh, I thought they'd keep that promise. Oh, I thought they meant it that time. Oh, I thought. He has never been disappointed because there has never been an unmet expectation. And even so, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He gave us something we did not have, favor. He gave us something we did not have, grace, so that we could do and so that we could be. And not so he could take something from us, but so he could give something to us. Jesus Christ is the gift of favor. Jesus Christ is the gift of grace. Jesus Christ is the gift of salvation. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person listening and every person watching, that we would pick our heads up, O oh sons and daughters of God, no matter how many pig pens, no matter how many prodigal areas have been or are in our lives, no matter how many times we feel like we've failed, no matter how many times we feel like we've broken promises, no matter how many times we feel like that we have unmet expectations by God. The truth is, I'm his favorite. I don't have everything I need to do everything he's called me to do, but he does. And he rests that resource on me, when and where, and I can tap into it through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I've missed you guys so much. Uh, Merry belated Christmas. Happy New Year coming up. Uh, we will have another day off soon, but don't worry about that. There is a library of Pray First going back three years. And I guarantee you, you haven't watched them all. So go back there. It'll seem very real and very live and very new, especially if you interact, hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag, well, don't hashtag live because that'd be a lie. Hashtag recorded. Hashtag shared. Share it again. You know you can share it more than once. Get it out on your page. I love you guys. Have a great day. Brandy and I and my family are going to do a pretty significant thing today because the Simplify series uh, that I taught over a year ago is still true in our lives today. And we are still simplifying. And the step we're taking right now is going to be one of the biggest. And, you know, we sold a very large home in South Haven that we built brand new and, and started downsizing. Well, today, <laughs> we're going to take that to a whole nother level. I can't wait to write the book. I'm going to write a book called Simplify and uh, help other people find ways to be more generous because you can. It's not that you need... That, that's all I want to say. I love you guys. I'll see y'all later.